This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 104. Apparently, everything will kill you. Yes, even that. By Steve Camp of nerdfitness.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Health Daily, the podcast that brings you the best content in health, fitness, and nutrition five days a week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Dr. Neil Malik. Hello, Life Optimizer, and welcome to a Thursday edition of Optimal Health Daily. This is one of four podcasts where we read to you from blogs for free so that you don't have to read them yourself, except on Fridays where I actually answer your questions. If you send one in, you're entered into small raffles to win books, but I'll tell you more about how to do that at the end of the show. Now, I mentioned yesterday that my wife was under the weather. Yeah, she's pretty sick, but I'm still feeling good, which is fantastic. I'm definitely taking care of her. And I also mentioned kind of that stress idea of how maybe after a big event, our bodies tend to be worn down. And what we're finding is, yes, that absolutely happens. One of the best examples of that is if you remember when you're back in school, after like the final exams, basically the exams that occur at the very end of your semester or your quarter, most of us tend to feel really run down afterwards. Many of us would spend the first part of vacation being sick. What happens is our immune system is basically reaching its point of exhaustion. And so what may have happened in my poor wife's case is she was working long hours at work. We had to clean the house, like I mentioned, for Thanksgiving. We had to attend two Thanksgivings, one of which we hosted. And I think her body just kind of crashed. The body said, okay, that's enough. That's too much. You need to put your feet up and just relax, which is what she's doing. So I'm gonna head back and make her some soup once I record this show. All right, with that, Let's hear from Steve as we optimize your life and help you stay healthy. Apparently, everything will kill you. Yes, even that. By Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. Life was so much simpler when I didn't know anything. Happily eating fast food, occasionally exercising, but not really. Going to work and living in an ignorance is bliss existence. Then I learned all about how fat and cholesterol are bad for us. So I stopped eating eggs, cut back on meat, switched to low-fat cookies, fat-free muffins, margarine, boo butter, and skim milk. I soon read some research that gluten is bad for me. I think I have a gluten intolerance. My neighbor did, so I bet I do too. So I switched over to gluten-free pizza, gluten-free pasta, and gluten-free gluten. I still feel like garbage and everything I eat tastes like cardboard but I'm healthier, so that's good. But then I stumbled across this idea of eating like a caveman. Maybe that will solve my problems. And eggs are good again, and so is bacon? Great, those are two of my favorite things. Time to pig out, huh? Get it? Pig out? Okay. Let's load up on steak, chicken, bacon, bacon wrapped steak, and vegetables that are also wrapped in bacon. Because bacon. But then I read this article that said, meat will kill you. And there was this one group of people in China who didn't eat meat and they have less risk of heart disease than we do. I'm not Chinese, but I like the idea of living longer. Okay, maybe going all in on only meat was a bad idea. What about the people of Okinawa? They have the longest life expectancy, apparently. And Mr. Miyagi was from Okinawa and he was good at karate. Maybe if I eat like they do, I'll live a long, karate-filled life. Wait, fish has mercury in it and mercury kills people. Plus, it was used by Tommy Lee Jones to make a bomb and blown away. Okay, fine. It's back to only fruit and vegetables. Blend that shit up. And now I'm a vegetarian. And guess what? Donuts are vegetarian, right? So donuts are okay. And so is fruit. Fruit comes from the ground, and the ground is nature. Therefore, I'm going to eat all the fruit. Why did I get bigger? I thought fruit was good for me. Okay, 600 grams of sugar a day through fruit might have been a bit much. In fact, I just read that sugar helps cancer cells grow. Steve Jobs was a fruititarian and he died of cancer. Ipso facto, fruit is the devil. Got it, no fruit. Meat is bad, fish has mercury. Thankfully, we still have vegetables. Except that they're genetically modified. Robo-vegetables. How long before they take over the planet? Okay, so let's eliminate all the vegetables that are GMO. Probably go ahead and get rid of any clothing that was made using GMO cotton or synthetic materials too. Phew, this healthy eating is exhausting. I need a drink. What's that you say? Wine has antioxidants and resveratrol in it? What the F is resveratrol? Just kidding, I don't care. I just wanted an excuse to tell people wine is healthy. Another bottle, please. I'm doing this for my body. 
you whine, this is the worst hangover ever, but that's the price of being healthy, right? Finally, I think I'm healthy. I found a place that stocks heirloom tomatoes, non-GMO asparagus, and water sourced from Norwegian glaciers, which is truly the only pure form of water out there. Nothing beats a good book, a comfy chair, and a tall glass of Viking water. Wait, what? Sitting will kill me now too? I've been listening to this podcast for five minutes, which means that took approximately 30 years off my life? I was never good at math. Got it, I should be standing. Time to go buy a standing desk and probably one of those treadmill things. Can one really put a price on your health? Well, it's apparently 1740 American dollars for a standing treadmill desk. Oh boy, even the shoes I wear are killing me, apparently. They constrict my toes' freedom to move. Stupid shoes. Perfect. I'm down to wearing a loincloth made from a naturally raised cheetah named Chester. Get it? And only walking barefoot on my treadmill desk and working at my computer. I should probably start running because I know fit people run, and so do cheetahs, and they're fast. Shin splints. Maybe running 50 miles a week after years of doing nothing was too much. What about CrossFit? I saw them at ESPN and those dudes are ripped. Off to my local box to complete my workout of the day. Look at me speaking the lingo. I even bought my Reebok CrossFit approved shoes, shorts, and shirt. I assume this will shave at least 10 seconds off my Fran time. For those of you that don't know, Fran is one of the workouts in CrossFit. Blown Achilles. Maybe doing 100 reps of Olympic lifts after jumping up and down on a box for five minutes and running half a mile wasn't too smart. Boy, this getting fit thing is tough and painful. Literally anything and everything I eat can kill me. Any place I visit will kill me. Anything I do will kill me. I guess I have two choices. One, live life like the bubble boy in Seinfeld. Two, use common sense. Do the best I can with what I have and don't take anything to the extreme. I'm gonna go with option B. Enjoy everything in moderation, even moderation itself. Eat more to gain weight, less to lose weight. Drink mostly water. Occasionally drink other things, even alcohol. Pick up heavy things from time to time. Make running fun. Walk as often as you can. Don't eat only one type or category of food. Lots of veggies, some meat, fruit, and nuts. Focus on big wins and stop stressing over the minutia. And play some video games. Just kidding, those will rot your brain. My mom told me. You just listened to the post titled, Apparently Everything Will Kill You, Yes, Even That, by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. You probably noticed a theme this past week with our shows. This was all about diet and which diet we should really follow. Which one is gonna be that one secret weapon to get you the body you wanted, to get you that health that you were so chasing after? Well, if you listen to all the episodes, basically there's no one right answer. It comes down to things that you've already heard before. Moderation and finding a meal plan that you can stick to over the long term. If you can do both of those things, chances are you're gonna be pretty well off. Now, Steve was referencing Okinawa, Japan. And he also mentioned how certain folks in other countries live longer than those of us living in the United States, for example. One of the more fascinating books on this topic was a book by Dan Buettner called Blue Zones. If you have time to read it, I definitely encourage it. Granted, the book isn't really heavy on research. Well, I should say well-designed research like randomized control trials. Mostly it's cases, case studies, people he's interviewed. And so the data is a bit skewed, but it's a fascinating concept. And it talks about why certain people in certain countries may live longer than the rest of us. So again, that's Blue Zones by Dan Buettner. A quick disclaimer, I don't make any money from the sale of that book. So there's no other reason for me to recommend it to you other than it's interesting. Now, like I mentioned at the top of the show, I answer your questions every Friday in a special Q&A episode. So if you want to send in your own question for me to answer right here on the show, just come by oldpodcast.com. There's a red bar along the side that says, ask a health question. If you click on that, you can record a question and send it in. It's totally free. It can be about diet, nutrition, fitness, disease prevention, stress management, something maybe my wife needs a little bit more of so she doesn't get sick next time, anything along those lines. And it's super easy to do. Or you can call in. The number is 61 I love OHD. Either way works, and if you send in an audio question, you'll be in special raffles every month to win books from us. 
Plus, you make me happy because it's one of my favoritest parts of the show. I love listening to your questions and I love answering them. So definitely keep those questions coming. And that wraps up 104 episodes, if you can believe it. I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday and I'll see you on tomorrow's Q&A show where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together, we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.